Hi there, my name is Aurora. From the outside, my life appears to be lavish, but it's a different world inside. The sound of my footfall reverberated down our mansion's big staircase, which was usually silent. My father, a tough man with a look that could put out fires, was buried in papers in his study. Aurora, he would frequently remark, our riches is our heritage, but it's moreover a duty. It wasn't until much later in life that I really understood his meaning. Darling, remember to uphold our family's reputation, in all you do, my mother remarked to me over one of our rare dinners together. She was the more subdued presence in our house, but her impeccable style made her friendliness feel far. Five years my senior, my sister was the polar opposite of me. She fought against the gilded cage into which we were born, and I recall overhearing her acrimonious disputes with our parents. You can't control my life forever, she would yell, her voice despair mixed with wrath. I can't remain here anymore, Aurora. It's suffocating, she admitted, her eyes red with tears, when I discovered her packing her things one evening. I stood there, speechless, and part of me envied her bravery for escaping. Why don't you accompany me? She inquired abruptly. Even though my life was comfortable, it held me back. I... I can't, I said, as I paused, conflicted. I hope one day you'll see beyond these boundaries, she added as she turned to go, her eyes displaying a mixture of understanding and disappointment. The home felt even more of a golden cage when she departed. My parents were more indulgent with me, but it was a fake gesture more motivated by shame than love, maybe as a result of their own conduct. My life was pleasant, sure, but at what cost? I learned to wear a mask of contentment as I grew up in that stillness, but deep down I knew I was merely evading the chains my sister battled so hard against. I recall hearing our parents' disputes with my sister Elise reverberate through the hallways while I watched her from the top of the stairs. She was always a wild, ferocious storm that clashed with the inflexible world our parents created. Elise's voice cut through the quiet of the evening like a razor. You can't control my life forever, Dad said. Our house, our rules, in a solid, unshakable voice that sounded like a rock against turbulent waters. Mom said, We only want what's best for you, darling, as I slipped closer without being seen. What's best for me, or what's best for your reputation? Elise mocked. I winced. I could never say what Elise ventured to say. You're acting unreasonable, Elise. Mom's tone was a mixture of worry and annoyance. We're just trying to protect you from making mistakes. Elise snapped back, her defiant eyes flashing. Mistakes? You mean like having my own opinions? I bit my lip as I experienced a tinge of worry at the penalties she would face mixed with respect for her bravery. His voice rose. You're not seeing the bigger picture? It's not just about you, it's about our family's legacy. Legacy? Is that what you call this gilded cage? Elise said with a sad laugh. Her eyes were reflecting a battle I felt, but never had the courage to talk about. And I could see it. Elise was the one that stood out and rebelled, I was the good daughter, the silent observer who was too scared to upset the status quo. Elise's voice cracked a little as she replied, Maybe I don't want your legacy. A thick stillness descended, full with unsaid words and boiling anger. Though I could see the pain in their eyes, our parents' jaws were set in a determined way. They refused to move. Elise finally turned to face me, and we exchanged a brief look. She was asking for help in a quiet way, and I wasn't bold enough to respond. The door slammed behind her like a last period after a furious dispute, and she rushed out. I stood there feeling empty and hollow. I could feel the distance between us widening at that very instant. Elisa pursued independence, a route I was too afraid to go, and I knew that I was really alone in this house of rigid rules and icy loves as I heard my parents' heavy footsteps leave. I always knew I was different. I learned early on how to achieve my goals, since I grew up in a home that reverberated with the quiet of wealth. I had become an expert manipulator by the time I was fifteen, and I used this skill with a brutal accuracy in the classroom. I can still clearly recall one specific day as though it were a scar. 
I was watching the corridor fill with kids while resting against my locker. A girl from my class named Jenna stepped forward nervously. She responded without raising her voice above a whisper. Hey, Aurora. I arched an eyebrow as I looked at her disheveled hair and worn-out clothing. What do you want, Jenna? Grasping a notepad close to her breast, she twitched. I... I was wondering if I could borrow your notes from yesterday's biology class. I missed it because of my mom's appointment at the clinic. The clinic. The clinic run by my mother. I grinned. Oh, Jenna, always playing the sympathy card. You know, not everyone has to resort to such pathetic tactics. Her cheeks turned crimson. I'm not. I just need help. I sneered and called out to the kids close. Help? Or an easy way out? Listen, Jenna, the world isn't a charity. You need to learn that. We were interrupted by a voice. Hey, Aurora, let her go, said classmate Mark. It's just notes. I looked up at him, my eyes icy. And what's it to you, Mark? Planning to be her knight in shining armor? He refused to back down. It's called being decent. You should try it sometime. I chuckled, a tone full of contempt. Decency is for those who can't afford to be anything else. Remember that. With her eyes full of unshed tears, Jenna glanced at me and quickly turned away. Mark shot me a sidelong glance and followed her. I experienced an odd ache in my chest while I was alone myself. It was something unpleasant, not remorse, since I didn't do regret. I dismissed it and went to class prepared to continue ruling without opposition. I shook my head, though, as I continued to walk as my sister's words continued to play in my thoughts. One day, Aurora, you'll see. Life isn't just about taking, it's about what you give back. If there was anything weak about me, it was weak, and they were words for the weak. Following high school, I attended college. College life was nothing what I expected. I recall my typical arrogance blending with a newfound sensation of freedom as I strolled around the campus. However, no one gave a damn about my background or identity here. I was sitting in the cafeteria one afternoon when I heard a discussion taking on at the adjacent table. It's not about where you start, it's where you end up, a girl with eager, sparkling eyes was saying to her pals. Her remarks touched a nerve in me. Weeks passed, and I could no longer help but be pulled to Nicole. She was kind, understanding, and truly liked. Everything I wasn't. When I worked up the guts to approach her one day, I tried to seem casual as I responded, Hey, Nicole, right? With a glint of astonishment in her eyes, she looked up. Yeah, that's me. And you're Aurora, aren't you? I nodded, suddenly uneasy. I... I've been thinking about what you said the other day. About starting points and endings. Nicole grinned, her smile pleasant and genuine. It's true, you know. We all have the power to change, to grow. After a moment of hesitation, I said, I'm starting to realize that I've hurt people in the past, and I've not always been the nicest person. Her face became more composed. Acknowledging that is the first step, Aurora. What matters is what you do next. Despite the simplicity of her remarks, they had the power of a revelation to me. I had never had a meaningful discussion in college, and it changed the way I was. I observed Nicole ever since, taking note of her generosity. I began to doubt my behaviors and attitudes. Once disregarded, the sounds of my sister's hardships suddenly struck a chord with me. I came to the realization that, although it was never my intention, I had become a reflection of my parents' coldness. That was the year I started to change. At first, it was subtle. A nice word here. A modest deed there. However, every stride I took was a step in the direction of who I wanted to become and away from the person I had been. My time in college taught me not only academic subjects, but also life lessons, empathy, and the ability to affect change. I met Lucas at this time of reflection and development, and we started a relationship that offered stability but lacked the emotional depth I was starting to realize I needed. Lucas and I met at a college event. Although he lacked remarkable good looks, there was something fascinating about him. Our discourse was easy to follow. As he sipped his drink, he said, So, 
Aurora, what brings you to this event? Informally? I rolled my eyes and said, I'm here more out of obligation than interest. And you? I'm pursuing my studies to become a dentist, he grinned. It's a family tradition. Our conversations increased in frequency. We would get together at the cafe and talk about everything from our goals to the routine of student life. I was always captivated by his idea of starting a dental practice, but I often questioned whether it was driven more by greed than by passion. Lucas turned to face me one evening as we were sitting in our preferred cafe nook. He had a serious sparkly in his eyes. Aurora, I've been thinking, he said. We're both ambitious and understand each other's world. What if we consider a future together? I wavered. Though it wasn't the love tale I had in mind, there was something appropriate about the concept. Lucas, are you suggesting... He grasped my hand by reaching across the table. Yes, a partnership. We both benefit. We both get what we want. It's practical. I took a time to consider it. Okay, Lucas. Let's get this done, I said, with an odd sense of serenity. There was no lavish ceremony. The wedding was modest. Lucas had said, I don't have time for any fun. At home, in front of just a handful of close friends, we signed the paperwork. Our shared life was cozy. My parents gave us a lovely apartment that we moved into. Lucas was frequently preoccupied with his schoolwork and clinic schedule. The peaceful routine was comforting, but sometimes I questioned whether this was true contentment. Our marriage lacked the warmth I seen in other marriages, I quickly discovered. But it was steady, and I had learned to cherish stability above everything else. Lucas was a decent, if not very passionate, companion. He would frequently ask, we make a great team, don't we? And I would nod, persuading myself that this was sufficient. In my heart, though, I couldn't help but wonder whether life had more to offer than this cozy arrangement. As Lucas and I negotiated our marriage, which was more about practicality than passion, we welcomed the arrival of our twin sons, who brought with them a new level of responsibility and complexity. I would frequently find myself watching the twins sleep through the nursery window. Their contented expressions stood in sharp contrast to the turbulence within me. My life with Lucas had become predictable and comfortable, but emotionally devoid. Lucas came in one evening when I was preparing supper, his face buried in his phone. I said, expecting to get a response, Lucas, could you set the table? He looked up and gave an inattentive nod. Sure, Aurora. I tried to break through the stillness that had become our dinner companion as we sat down to eat. How was your day? As usual, busy, he said, his eyes fixed on his phone. Got a new project at the clinic. It's going to be a hectic few weeks. I let out a silent sigh. These tedium exchanges had become all that was left of our chats. That's great. Maybe we can talk about it later? He glanced up, a fleeting hint of something. Maybe annoyance? He crossed his face. Sure, we can. But honestly, it's just regular work stuff. Nothing interesting. I nodded, the old pang of disappointment still present. The remainder of the dinner was consumed silently. When I laid in bed later that night, Lucas's side was still chilly and vacant. From his study, I heard the quiet ticks of his keyboard. Working into the night had been his nightly practice. I turned over and tried to remember when we'd really talked, about something other than the kids or his job. It felt like a bygone era. I gripped Lucas's arm the next morning as he quickly kissed the twins farewell. Lucas. We need to talk. We're drifting apart. A scowl creased his face as he stopped. Aurora, I'm late for a meeting. Can we discuss this later? I let go of his arm and felt a wave of annoyance. I said, yes, later, as I saw him bolt out the door. I couldn't get rid of the sensation that something was missing even though I was in the peaceful home surrounded by the possessions of a life I had once imagined. Instead of the love and passion that belonged within these walls, there was a comfortable but meaningless existence. That was when it dawned on me that our marriage was like a nicely packaged present that had no contents. Sure, it's cozy, but it's really disappointing. The toughest thing was that I wasn't positive whether Lucas shared my feelings. 
The regularity of raising twins and upholding an apparently ideal home caused the fissures in my marriage to widen, exposing the emptiness at the center of our union. It was a typical Thursday when my world began to collapse, as I recall. As I was preparing supper, the setting light created a cozy glow through the kitchen window. In the living area, the twins laughing provided a reassuring soundtrack while they played. My sister, who I hadn't seen since I was 13, showed up out of the blue at that point. She said, Hello, Rora, in a tone that was a little bit nervous, but also determined. I was speechless and stood there holding a spatula. Elena? What? How did you find me? She looked around the room and finally settled on the pictures of Lucas and the children. We need to talk, she began. About Lucas. A knot formed in my gut. What about him? I said, attempting to maintain a calm tone. Elena sighed, her face serious. Rora, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but Lucas, he's cheating on you. With my friend. A beat skipped in my heart. Your friend? Elena, are you sure? She gave a nod. I'm positive. I confronted her, and she confessed. I'm so sorry. The room began to swirl. Betraying me, Lucas? My Lucas? It didn't seem feasible. Nevertheless, I could tell she was telling the truth by the way she looked at me. I said, I... I don't know what to say. Experiencing an odd feeling of disassociation, the truth of his treachery was too much to absorb. Elena reached out and touched my hand with consolation. I know this is hard to hear, but you deserve better, Rora. You need to confront him. With a slow nod, my mind racing. I will. I need to know why. Lucas arrived home late the next day, as usual. In the living room, with the children fast sleeping, I waited for him. I knew I had to face him as soon as he entered. Lucas, we really need to talk. I remarked, sounding more serious than I actually felt. With a raised eyebrow, he took off his coat. What's wrong? It concerns us and you. I went on, attempting to maintain my calm. I know about the affair. Lucas froze, astonishment turning to defiance in his expression. What affair? Rora, you're being paranoid. Don't lie to me, Lucas. My sister told me everything. You're cheating on me with her friend. He was silent for a time before letting out a sigh. Rora, I... Save it, Lucas. I just want to know one thing. Why? He averted his gaze and spoke in a hushed tone. I don't know, Rora. I just... I felt trapped. We got married so young and... With a hurting heart, I cut him off. So, you decided to betray me? Betray our family? He remained silent, and in that moment, I discovered mine. At that moment, I understood that the guy I married and the life I believed we led were both facades, and underneath, it was nothing but nothingness. I feel like you ought to go, I said. Lucas gave a nod, his gaze avoiding me. I'll stay at a hotel tonight. I sat alone as he went, the realization of the reality beginning to weigh heavily. Not only was my marriage ended, but I also felt like I had been betrayed more deeply than simply Lucas. It was a betrayal of every goal and dream I had ever had. I realized at that moment that my life would never be the same. The delusion of our marriage was destroyed when it became clear that Lucas had cheated on me, sending me into a tornado of sorrow and betrayal. More emotional upheaval strengthened my desire for vengeance, so I used my family's riches and power to meticulously prepare and execute a deliberate and strategic retaliation against Lucas. In a dimly lit café, I sat across from the private investigator, tapping anxiously on the table. My voice was hardly audibly above a whisper as I inquired, So, what do you have for me? He passed a folder over the surface. Everything you need is in here. Lucas wasn't careful. His affair, the sham marriage, it's all documented. My pulse was pounding as I opened the folder and skimmed the documents. I couldn't have asked for more. I said, this... This is perfect. A part of me felt bad about what I was going to do, even as I plotted my next move. But then my resolve hardened as I thought of Lucas's treachery. I faced Lucas at home a few days later. I held out the folder and said, We need to talk. 
with a non-readable expression, he turned to face me. About what, Aurora? About this, I said, tossing the papers onto the desk. I know everything, the affair, the fake marriage. How could you? Lucas's complexion become white. Aurora, I can explain. I'm not interested in your justifications, I interrupted. I want a divorce, and I'm taking the kids. Lucas's eyes narrowed. You won't win, Aurora. I'll fight you on this. Go ahead, I replied in a firm voice. But know this, I have all the evidence I need, and I'm not afraid to use it. I was in a stuffy courtroom where my future was on the line. I sat there with my life with Lucas swirling through my head, a whirlwind of deceit and treachery. I assure you, Your Honor, my client has been nothing but a devoted mother and wife, my lawyer remarked firmly. Mr. Lucas's carelessness and adultery are well demonstrated by the evidence. An haughty man representing Lucas shot back, saying, My client has been an exemplary provider. These claims are spiteful and without merit. I gave Lucas a quick look. He looked away from me, showing me how guilty he was. The judge stared at us over his glasses. I've determined that Mrs. Aurora will continue to have custody of the children after evaluating the matter. The marital assets will also be distributed fairly. Lucas's expression twisted with rage. This is absurd. She wouldn't exist without me, he cried out. His real nature became evident as his explosion reverberated across the quiet courtroom. I had a combination of emotions as we down the courthouse steps outside, relief and melancholy. My buddy Nicole wrapped her arm around me and said, You did it, Aurora. I did, but at what cost, Nicole? I groaned. Our children's family is dysfunctional. Nicole gave me a shoulder squeeze. You've given them an opportunity to live a healthier life free from deception and lies. She was correct, I realized as I glanced at my kids, who were playing close by and without realizing how serious the situation was. This was the start of a brand new chapter in which love and honesty would triumph. I muttered, I'm just glad it's over, as one tear fell down my face. Nicole smiled comfortingly at me. She gestured for me to go towards the car and said, Come on, let's get you and the kids home. The courtroom shrank in the rearview mirror as we drove away, serving as a reminder of my power and a symbol of a chapter completed. Even though the path ahead was unknown, I was prepared to tackle it with my newly acquired fortitude. After my successful court battle with Lucas, I struggled to accept the reality of my new life as a single parent and felt both triumphant and deeply bereaved. Observing the fall foliage sway in the breeze, I stood near the window. My life had calmed down after being a chaotic tornado. I treasured the rare moment I got to myself while the twins were in school. My reverie was interrupted when the doorbell rang. With his endearing smile, Mark, my new love, was waiting for me when I answered the door. Hey, Aurora, he said with warmth. I thought I'd surprise you. Mark, you always know how to brighten my day. I grinned, experiencing a real satisfaction that was previously unfamiliar to me. We took a seat in the living room. The room seemed different today, free of the lingering effects of the past and full of fresh recollections. Mark said, looking into my eyes, I've been thinking about us, the kids, about a future together. I paused, wary because of the wounds from my past. Mark, I... I want that too. But you know my history. I'm not the easiest person to be with. His touch comforting, he grasped my hand. Aurora, we all have our pasts. It's not about what happened before, it's about what we build now, together. I felt a tear escape, a tear of hope mixed with terror. I'm scared, Mark, scared of making the same mistakes, of hurting you, of being hurt. Mark got up and drew me into his arms. Life is about taking chances, Aurora. I'm willing to take a chance on us, on a future where we both find happiness. Are you? His remarks reverberated throughout me. That's when I understood that if I wanted to go forward, I had to let go of the worries holding me back. Yes, Mark, I want to try. For us, for the kids, for a chance at a happiness I never thought I'd find. I felt at ease as we stood there, embracing each other. 
The trip had been long and riddled with suffering, but it led me here, to a new beginning, to a chance at love, and a family established not from convenience, but from true compassion and understanding. Mark muttered, Let's begin our journey, Aurora, together. I nodded, hope brimming in my heart. Together.